Hello everyone and welcome to another Let's Talk video. The topic for this video will be new units from uh, Allied Forces DLC and also I will say a few words about units uh, from the previous DLC because uh, it's uh, very hard to get all those units uh, into one army or even on one shard. Uh, I will use the option to see these units uh, in this uh, internet shard where if you go actually not internet shard wait internet uh, internet battle where if you go to battle preparation and pick a hero you can actually open this screen where you can see all units in the game where you can see all items in the game and all spells in the game so I will use this to talk a bit about these new units and how you can get them. First, let's talk about uh, new units from the newest DLC from the Allied Forces. Almost all of them we can see right here, so I will take them one by one and say a few words to them. I haven't, uh, I didn't have a chance to try them uh, yet. I just managed to get only one of them. Uh, it's not that easy, but uh, when I went through them here there are some of uh, these units with a really uh, interesting potential to some new army builds but we'll see how viable that will be because you need an alliance with uh, a proper race to get access to it so that's the first thing I wanted to say how you actually get to this new content from the allied forces for every race in the game which uh, uh, or where uh, you have the option of making an, an alliance, there were uh, added two new units. So, let's start with halflings as we have it here. And for halflings, we have halfling forager and halfling scout. If you look at them, I think that these numbers are actually not right because they are the same for all three types halfling units. For the basic halfling, for forager, for scout, these numbers are all, always the same and I think that when you get them in the game it actually will be different. So maybe this is just a bug that it's not uh, displayed properly, but at least we can uh, see the description and uh, we can have a look on their new unique stats. So let's start with the forager. A forager's duty is to find sustenance for troops and to scavenge for loot after the battle. And halflings happen to be excellent at both tasks. In combat, halfling forages prefer to stay away from action, avoiding enemies as best as they can. So, as the usual stuff uh, you can see on the halflings, which is collect ammo, uh, they also have agility. So, when they attack in melee, they are not gonna get counter attacked and uh, they also have a new ability called scavenger uh, and the description is the bodies of enemies slain by this unit produce double loot so if you manage to get last hits with this guy you get more loot it sounds interesting and uh, if you have uh, like one or two of these two guys it could be probably worth it saving uh, their last hit for some strong you know tier 3 tier 4 unit because then the difference in the loot could be quite significant when you kill like uh, or get last hits on three skeletons probably you will get like plus 10 gold in the end and that's it and this could be important when you are really early on the shard and every bit of gold helps but at that point you are not gonna have alliance with the halflings most likely so uh, you'll be probably using these guys later to get last hits on I don't know hydras so you know uh, units like that and uh, get a huge benefit from that and I'm not sure how exactly this will work if the double loot means that you will just get more gems and more gold or if it can give you more items if this can give more items this could actually be an important unit for the late game for the gearing up of your heroes it uh, could make uh, quite a significant difference so it will need some testing to figure out how exactly this works but overall this uh, this guy I'm not sure interesting but uh, probably not that super important but also what I should say these are just skills you you have on uh, level 1 and you will get more skills as you level up so it's possible that uh, there will be some skills which are not visible here yet that will make him a lot stronger and this applies to all other units I'll be talking about this is just the impression from uh, 
uh, what I can see on level 1. Getting these guys to like level 30 and see all options, that will take a while. I will try to do it with all these units, but uh, yeah, that, as I said, will take uh, quite a few hours. So, that's uh, Halfling Forager, and uh, let's move on to Halfling Scout. Um, small stature is very, very helpful, and your goal is not to be noticed. Halfling scouts efficiently exploit this advantage to sneak up to an unsuspecting enemy and slay him from behind. So, uh, let's uh, check skills. Collect ammo as usual. Agility, that's normal. But, we have stealth, sly, board, sly boots and uh, backstab. So, this is basically a uh, halfling combined with, uh, with thief and with high level goblin. Um, this sounds a lot more interesting than the previous uh, previous unit. Uh, it will all depend on uh, how fast you'll be able to get these guys and uh, how strong they will actually become on higher levels. But uh, having a unit that uh, seems to be decent in melee, uh, that um, is uh, can have stealth, that has ranged attack, uh, with sly boots, making them almost immune to uh, to melee damage as long as you can keep their stamina high. This definitely has some potential to have some, you know, invi um, invisible scout uh, running around the map, uh, backstabbing casters. This looks quite interesting, I have to say, and um, uh, definitely much better than the previous uh, halfling unit. And overall, I think that's one of the better units from the whole uh, from the whole DLC. Okay, so that's uh, these are halflings, and let's move on to another race, which will be lizard man. Uh, let's start with uh, lizard man priest, a member of the ruling caste of uh, lizardman society. The priest prefers to avoid melee while granting blessing to his warriors and bestowing curses upon his enemies. So, from the first, uh, from the um, impression on, on level one, this will be something like. Uh, um, Usual lizard man with some extra uh, extra spells, so combination of uh, lizard healer, uh, shaman, something like that depends on uh, which spells exactly he's gonna get. He has regeneration, so that's uh, the usual stuff. A swamp knowledge that's also usual for lizards and the magic shot. That's important thing. He is also ranged, so. Um, that gives the lizard army some more options. Overall, the, the impression of all these units uh, is that uh, they are a lot more versatile than uh, the base type they were developed from. Uh, so we have, uh, as I said, ranged unit with uh, magic damage, uh, decent in melee it seems, with uh, some further level ups for some boost spells, question is what exactly that will be, uh, but uh, there definitely is some potential if you get these spells, this could be a good unit, so I will try this but can't say more, we will see on higher levels what will happen with those spells as I already said. So that's Priest, and next we have Lizardman Turtleback. While untrained and unprepared for regular formation fighting, the lizard men have invented another way to protect themselves from an attack from behind. The strongest and most resilient among lizard men become turtleback warriors, armored with great turtle's shell on their back, able to deflect almost any attack. So this uh, looks like uh, basically lizard men on steroids with. Um, uh, backstep immunity. I'm not sure how important actually backstep immunity is. Uh, I expected something different when you read armor with the greatest stress shell on their back, able to deflect almost any attack. If uh, this last sentence, able to deflect almost any attack, means just backstep immunity, then it's not that awesome. But if you, uh, if that means that later you will get some uh, more, uh, more. Uh, Damage evasion in the form of uh, I don't know sly boots or maybe something even new that will just really 
deflect the damage, reflect it to, to the source, which is definitely possible. You don't know uh, if there are any new abilities in the game which are not visible on level 1. Then um, this could definitely have some potential, though uh, I don't know how it's with those stats as I said before. If those base stats will be the same as normal lizards, then it's not that awesome. These um, like higher versions of um, uh, of those units should have higher base numbers. So I just hope that th this is a bug. This is not displayed properly, and in the game those stats will be higher on level one, and they will be a bit stronger. If that's true and it will work like that, then again this guy will have some potential uh, and um, I can see uh, some build where you, where you would use this guy uh, for example to block some uh, choke points on the map or something like that but it, uh, that again depends if you will get some more uh, skills than just backstep immunity. If backstep immunity will be the only damage evasion you get then probably nothing interesting here. So another unit where we just uh, have to try to level this up and see how exactly this will work on high levels. And let's move to orcs. First, orc witch doctor. Mm. Orc shamans, better known as witch doctors, are responsible for con sorry for conducting conducting the tribes rituals and ceremonies they command great fear and respect among their kin all too often the tribal chief is only a figurehead while the high shaman holds true power over the tribe while in combat the witch doctors can inspire their kin improving their fighting ability improving their fighting ability moreover they can harm their enemies with the scream of urubu a curious spell or is that a prayer never studied by the magicians to preoccupied by loftier matters so it seems like uh, uh, the witch doctor still has uh, stats uh, as uh, the usual orc with his damage armor and probably they will get berserking on higher levels so all the usual stuff you would expect from orcs but together with that there will be some level ups uh, focused on casting this guy actually doesn't uh, seem to have ranged attack, so it's just pure like like melee caster, something like a melee support caster. Uh, and um, uh, special skills he has, first one, Orc Fury. All neighboring friendly orcs receive plus two to their melee attack. I really like this, and uh, uh, this actually has some potential, because... Uh, it's possible in the campaign to get permanent alliance with orcs. So if you can get uh, orcs early in the shard and get uh, witch doctors early, that will significantly boost them together with medals you can get, together from bonuses you get from your hero. I could even see this guy replacing barbarians to be honest. And barbarians, when I say replacing barbarians, that's, you know, I consider barbarian to be uh, one of the two strongest units in the game. So, if uh, I say that this could replace Barbarian, this unit can be really important. Or this unit, like Orcs, can be uh, really important with uh, these uh, with this boost. And um, we have uh, another skill. That is that spell scream of Urugu. The unit uh, can cast the scream of Urugu spell, dealing damage to the target and lowering its morale. And it costs. Uh, one ammo. We have four shots. Probably will be uh, there will be an option to get more as you level up. And if you have orcs with fear and uh, the same unit is uh, boosting your other fighters, so you just uh, keep moving with uh, your orcs and uh, uh, boosting uh, bo boosting them while casting fear all around you. Now this looks pretty decent and upkeep of three uh, three gold per turn. You have got to be kidding me! Like this unit looks so strong at uh, at this moment, and uh, with all the level ups, there are this really has a huge potential, and I will have to try this. And probably this will be the first race I will uh, make alliance with on camera, so we can see how this will work. Uh, 
uh, as uh, I will keep leveling this. So that was Witch Doctor, and uh, let's move on to another orc unit, which is Orc Club Thrower. Again, then cheap unit uh, with uh, just the basic uh, damage armor. But first, I should probably read the description. Orcs are known to despise missile weapons, holding only the the hand-to-hand -hand prowess in high regards. Despite that, uh, despite that, they do not consider it dishonorable to throw something heavy at their enemy before engaging him. Some something like a specially customized throwing club. So this looks like uh, again really close to barbarian. I have to say, uh, because uh, if you think about level ups you get with barbarian and level ups you get with orcs uh, on orc you get berserk eventually which basically makes him almost the same as barbarian the only thing uh, the uh, orcs were missing was uh, the extra you get on barbarian now with uh, the club thrower you get uh, stunning missiles so you can throw uh, your club uh, with a range attack of 7 which is really a lot you have uh, a mo of three, so it's more than the barbarians have. And when you hit, you decrease the stamina of the target. So another unit which is basically a bit stronger barbarian. So I have to say, orcs uh, look really strong now, and with the option to have permanent alliance with them and recruit them early, this could be another uh, like uh, our new best evil unit in the game. I really can see that happening, but um, again, uh, I didn't try it in game yet, so I'll have to test that. And if that will be really true, we will see that. But I really want to test this soon. Okay, so uh, that's orcs. Uh, this is just a basic lizard man, so we can skip that and let's move to dwarves. First is dwarf guardsman, where we have uh, compared the upkeep upkeep of 17 of this guy compared to those orcs with upkeep 3. Just this makes uh, those orcs so much more useful. I should probably check upkeep of uh, previous units, upkeep of 6, which is not that bad. It's actually decent, and these guys upkeep of 5. Yeah, it's, it's also manageable, it's uh, quite good, but when we look at those dwarves, upkeep of 17, that, that's just ridiculous. I know that dwarves are strong, but upkeep of 17? I don't know. That seems a bit too much. Uh, but uh, still, let's have a look on this guy. These elite dwarven warriors are armed with long halberds and wielding them with great efficiency despite their short uh, stature. Uh, their ability to strike with blazing speed often surprises their opponents thinking themselves safe behind the cover of their troops. So, uh, on level 1 we just get hill knowledge, typical for dwarves, and we get trust. Uh, which uh, means you can just strike over one hex. Uh, the unit can attack an enemy in melee across one hex at uh, the cost of uh, three stamina points to read the exact description. But if uh, it's just trust, this doesn't mean that you can hit behind enemy lines. Uh, you can get trust on guardsmen, and I've tried it with guardsmen, and you can't like attack through a unit. If you have a guardsman, then it's opponent's unit, and behind it is, for example, opponent's healer. You can't hit the healer through the unit. Uh, if there is nothing on the tile between you, you can hit across the one tile. Just the tile has to be unoccupied. Uh, so there probably will be some other promotion that would make it possible to attack behind the enemy line because. From the description, uh, their ability to strike with blazing speed often surprises their opponents thinking themselves safe behind the cover of their troops. It specifically says that you will be able to strike behind enemy troops. So if there is a skill that will make it possible to like, pierce a unit standing in front of you and hit something that's behind, uh, which is definitely possible because Fire Dragon has uh, a similar skill, then uh, it's definitely interesting, but for the price, I don't know, this guy would have to get some ridiculous upgrades to be worth 17 uh, gold per turn. Um, 17 is too much, I would agree with like 10, maybe 12, uh, when I look at him like this, but yeah, 17, that's just too much, and 
Also, if you consider how hard it is to get alliance with wars, unit with potential if it wasn't wasted with uh, requirements, I would say. Mm, so much to it, probably. Okay, so that's uh, one dwarven unit, and let's move to another one dwarf engineer. Even though dwarven war machines require no crews, an engineer accompanying them may boost their combat performance significantly. And while this skill and while his skill at directing the vehicles and repairing their damage is useful by itself, the Dwarven Engineer is no stranger to battles either. He is excellent with crossbow, dealing on a lot of suffering to enemies at middle ranges. So, we have a Dwarf, actually, let's first look at his skills. We have a ranged Dwarf with 10 shots, who has piercing shots, Hill knowledge, as you would expect from any dwarf, with new ability repair. The unit can repair the damage dealt to war machines and uh, mechanical creatures. And engineer, all neighboring friendly mechanical creatures and war machines capable of shooting receive plus two to their ranged attack, uh, with upkeep of seventeen. Mm. With this guy. I think there is a potential for a new ranged army. I don't see uh, an option for like a pure dwarf, a dwarven army with just you know dwarves. But a mixed army with these dwarven engineers combined with with some uh, ballistae and catapults, that could be something because they already can shoot and they are not that weak and they have a lot of ammo. With armor piercing sh shots, they are basically like crossbowmen. I would almost say. And um, when you add the repair ability, which uh, solves the biggest problem of ballista and catapults, why uh, most people are not using them because uh, you can't heal them. Now you can finally heal or repair them and edit uh, the engineer skill that further boosts the already high range attack of ballista and catapults, especially catapults. Now this guy could really be important. You get like three of them to your army. And place them properly uh, through throughout your army, so they boost everything else you have. Uh, this could be really interesting. And the important thing: they are just tier one units, so you can just uh, fill your army with ballista and catapults without wasting any uh, any higher uh, higher tier slots. So this could really work. The only problem is. Uh, uh, how fast you'll be able to get this. I can see it as uh, an option for army that you will be leveling after you get uh, your first main hero and you want something interesting for your, for your secondary hero. So this could be an option. I definitely see potential in that army. Uh, I will try it, but uh, yeah, definitely not something you'll be able to use as a, as a starting army or something you can get early. Compared to, for example, orcs, which are viable right from the start. But still, at least something. This guy definitely has some potential. But we'll see how that will work. And also, if he gets some more level ups, and he will get some more interesting level ups. I like this guy. I like this. I I like him a lot. One of the most interesting units uh, from uh, the DLC, I have to say. But let's move from dwarves, and uh, we'll move to elves. So first is elf druid. Druids are elves who have uh, fully devoted themselves to serving nature. They tend to live as hermits deep within impenetrable uh, thickets, avoiding contact with the rest of the elven community. Nonetheless, in times of danger, they are, uh, they are always willing to aid their brethren. Druids are dangerous opponents, possessing some kind of unique nature magic that permits them to summon the creatures of the forest uh, to their aid. So, uh, we still have the usual elf with his strong range attacks, a lot of ammo, with forest knowledge, precise shot. These uh, two things are uh, the usual stuff you get for normal elves. And together we have a caster who can cure wounds and cast uh, Insect Swarm. Insect Swarm is a, is a new spell. Uh, the unit can cast the, uh, the insect uh, swarm spell, summoning a swarm of wasps upon the target. The swarm deals damage and reduces the target's attack and defense. So it's a debuff that's dealing damage. Uh, it consumes two ammunition, but uh, yeah, sometimes the debuff can be more important than just direct damage. So 
uh, one interesting skill and also as you level up you'll probably get a lot more like stronger versions of the, the swarm uh, uh, insect swarm or maybe the ability to summon something else even uh, it sounds like uh, or the description sounds like uh, there might be more you might be able to summon uh, I don't know some animals something like that which definitely gives this, uh, this guy some potential but uh, yeah what he will get on higher levels I don't know all of it would be speculation but even if you didn't get anything uh, f uh, like uh, you know uh, summoning animals or stuff like that you still have basically stronger elves elves are already really damn strong and uh, this guy can heal uh, units around him or himself uh, can cast debuffs, so it's elven steroids. So again, uh, pretty pretty good units. And elves uh, so far were uh, like the only uh, race worth making alliance with. So now with this boost, they have even more potential. So they will stay pretty damn strong. Just the upkeep, but uh, the upkeep was already high on elves. Uh, Twenty gold and one gem. It's really a lot. But uh, I think here it's maybe appropriate because elves are really strong, so you should really pay for uh, for their strength. So that was Elf Druid, and let's move to Elf Ranger. Uh, elves who completed their training at the Maple Branch School are called Rangers. These warriors are skilled at tracking and ambushing, and their training includes not just the mastery of bow, uh, but outstanding swordsmanship as well, making them able to stand their ground in melee. Uh, now, after I read uh, the last sentence, outstanding swordsmanship as well, what I did was I looked at his melee stats. And look at that, his melee stats are 5 and 6, and if we check uh, the druid it's 5 or 6 as well so I don't see any difference like description is outstanding swordsmanship but there is no difference in his, his melee stats this leads me to the conclusion that these stats are wrong they are just same for uh, elf, for, for elf ranger, for elf druid, for the normal elf and in game they will be different or hopefully they will be, they will be different so I think in the end this guy will be much stronger in melee while keeping his strength at range. He doesn't have any any new skills or abilities, but he will probably get the option to get some uh, melee level ups. I don't know, maybe trust, uh, maybe first strike. I would see f uh, first strike as a uh, skill that would uh, like be decent for for the ranger. Uh, and uh, maybe smite evil, something like that, making him basically a tier 1 guardsman, like a weaker version of guardsman, something like that, with range capabilities. Uh, again, the usual price, 20 and 1 for elves. Uh, how useful this guy will be depends on if that attack and counter attack will be higher and also if his defense and the range defense will be higher. You can't expect to have a decent melee unit with uh, melee defense 1 like that doesn't work, especially uh, with tier 1 unit. So if this number will be different in the end, this also could be a decent unit. But with these numbers, I would probably use him like a normal elf. Mm. I just wouldn't want this guy to stand in the front line, but we will see how it will be with those numbers. So, those are elves, and let's move to goblins. First goblin unit, Goblin Spitter. Most cunning among the goblins prefer to slay their enemies at distance, rather than risk their uh, hides in melee, uh, rather than hide, uh, oh, come on, rather than risk their hides in melee. Too weak to handle a bow, and to destitute to purchase a crossbow, the goblin marksmen have to resort to a blowgun loaded with poisonous thorns. The damage they cause might seem negligent at first, but over time the, uh, their deadly poison can kill even the most resilient army. Uh, from skills, swamp knowledge that already uh, we can already get on uh, normal goblins, and poison shot. Uh, the unit poisons the target with its shots, making it lose one hit point per turn for three turns. So, and upkeep of one, yeah. Uh, the upkeep is appropriate for stats of the unit. Uh, the poison shot on level one is really weak. I think there will be some level ups where you'll be able to make the poison stronger, but still, 
uh, range like four, uh, range of four. You have a lot of ammo, but um, yeah, it's still a goblin. Uh, maybe if you can get uh, sly boots, some you know some evasion, and if you'll be somewhere where you just don't have gold and you need some units, with it's upkeep of one. Uh, there would have to be really a desperate situation and use uh, tactics with these guys where you just, I don't know, get 16 of them and uh, just overwhelm the enemy. I can see that you can uh, get so many stacks on a strong unit that it will actually die from the poison, uh, but uh, I don't see this as uh, really a viable option. This would really have to be some desperate situation. Maybe these guys will get something stronger as they level up, uh, but I have to say Goblin seems to be the weakest alliance you can get even with these better units. Um, as you'd probably expect, and it uh, already was uh, before this DLC, so Goblins maybe for fun, but probably not uh, as some uh, decent army. But they still have one more unit uh, we can check, so let's have a look and go at Goblin Alchemist. Uh, goblin alchemists, capable of brewing all kinds of uh, potions and acids, command great reverence among their greenskin brethren. Both produ products are in great demand among the goblins. Some alchemists even try their hands at producing curative po uh, potions, although their healing tend to come with a plenty of unpleasant side effects. Uh, so, kind of goblin shaman unit, something like that, just. Uh, Instead of casting spells, they are brewing potions. Uh, on level 1, Swamp Knowledge, as you would expect from a goblin, and a special ability goblin potion spell. The unit can cast the goblin potion spell, which restores the target hit points, but damages uh, morale. And uh, it costs you 1 ammunition, this guy has 4 shots. So as you level up, you'll probably get more ammo, and I would say you'll be able to get more different potions so we'll be able to throw at acid maybe to decrease uh, the armor of uh, of opponents units uh, maybe you will get some some potion that uh, you'll be able to use on your own units to boost them but again this is a speculation I could see this uh, uh, happening like that would fit uh, to the alchemist really well to have just you know all kinds of potions and throwing them all around uh, all over the place, but still, yeah, you can boost your units, but uh, I wouldn't want to boost my goblins. I could see this uh, as a support unit. For example, if you pick uh, four buildings from from tier one and you you didn't pick a shaman and you still want tier one support, uh, you can use this guy you know as the like fifth tier one unit, fifth type of tier one unit could work like that. So definitely, uh, I would say the biggest potential from goblins, but still, it's still a goblin. So yeah, mm, not a big deal here, I am afraid. And uh, with this, we are done with tier one. The rest of tier one are units we had before. And uh, we have one more race to go, and those are centaurs. And centaurs are the only race with tier two units. Uh, and they have centaur chief. So let's have a look at him. Centaur troops become unstoppable indeed when their chief leads them into battle. Strongest and quickest among among the uh, the centaurs. Chiefs wreak havoc behind the enemy lines, slaughtering their archers and mages, then retreat to unleash the rain of arrows upon their infantry from safe distance. Well, in theory this sounds decent, but we'll see how it will work. I actually have uh, alliance with centaurs now in my off-camera campaign, so I've already started to level some centaurs to test this. And so let, let's have a look at him. Recuperation, the unit rate of stamina recovery while resting is increased by 1. Why not? You'll need probably a lot of stamina with uh, centaurs with all the running around shooting. Uh, and uh, also with the melee combat, so uh, why not? Forest knowledge, you have that on uh, all centaurs, so uh, they are pretty damn fast in forest. And I really like them in forest where you can just run around the uh, opponent who is struggling to get through the forest and you just uh, always can get behind and kill whatever you want, so uh, that's good, but uh, 
we've seen that before and uh, the new skill is battle cry all neighboring friendly units capable of moving in the current turn receive plus one speed until the end of turn does not affect immobilized units and to use this you need uh, three stamina i hope that it will be possible to just activate it uh, boost units you have around you and still move with the centaur chief who used the battle cry uh, I think it's possible that it will work like this I didn't try it yet but I really think it will work uh, work this way and if it does well not bad I can see an army with fast moving units uh, you know uh, running all over the map uh, just picking uh, opponents units one by one when there uh, when you will see uh, some lonely unit you will get most of your army to that unit pick it uh, before anything else will be able to get to you and just uh, running around the opponent's army with maybe uh, the boost you will get from like griffons from tier 3 or phoenix tier 4 something like that uh, and with the boost you can get from these guys why not but it's just a theory. I'm thinking about uh, this build for a while already, but it was missing something. So far, I was testing like uh, Pegasi and Horseman, and it didn't work that well. But with these guys, with the bonus they they can give, and also uh, with some probably more skills that will support the army as you level up. But again, that's just a speculation. I can see such a, a really fast army to work. Uh, but that's another thing that um, we'll have to test and we'll see how that will work. So, definitely some potential. Upkeep of 15, not bad at all for tier 2 units. Uh, you have to remember this is tier 2 units, not tier 1. So, for the tier 2 units, 15 gold per turn uh, is really not bad at all. And let's move to the, to the last the new unit from. Uh, uh, Allied Forces, which is Centaur Huntsman. Uh, this is the only unit I managed to already get. So, uh, I know so far I uh, didn't level him up uh, so much yet, but uh, at least I know how to get these units, which I'll talk uh, about in a second after we are done with this guy. So, let's read the description. When an enemy hero has to be taken prisoner and prisoner and not slain outright. The huntsmen of uh, of uh, centaurs lead the way. These agile creatures can efficiently entangle their target with a single throw of their bolas. It in pitched battles, the huntsmen are used as auxiliary troops to temporarily disable most dangerous enemies. So usual recuperation and forest knowledge, together with bolo, which is. Uh, I don't know, like short time, short time sleep, something like that. Uh, the unit can entangle enemies for two turns with the masterful throw uh, of a bolo. Uh, I haven't tested this skill yet, but uh, the only way how this really could work is just you you throw it in someone and he is basically rooted for two turns. So with uh, ammunition of six, you can just immobilize the whole army with like. Two huntsmen. It seems pretty crazy. Like you can just choose which units you will allow to come to you, and uh, which you will keep mobilized. And with the mobility of uh, centaurs, you really can run around the map and uh, mobilize anything without being in any danger. Because as you level up, you will get uh, the ability to actually attack and move after the attack which I don't uh, remember now how it's called but centaurs get this ability so you just immobilize something and run away to stay safe and when you need to uh, uh, root it again you will get there root it run away like I think three guys in, in an army can make a huge difference and I see potential in this unit we'll see how that will work on the battle map but uh, yeah, I can see some kind of uh, centaur fast-moving army uh, with I don't know griffons happening. Like definitely an option to build army like that, and I'm already trying to uh, build uh, such an army. So we will see. And um, one more thing I wanted to, uh, or actually two more things. First, just shortly, is uh, 
how do you get these units? Well, it's pretty simple. There are some speculation of, speculations on forums. Um, so I've tested it and uh, what I found out is uh, you just make an alliance with the race you want and recruit their basic units. As you level up, you will eventually get an option as, an, as a level up between a normal skill and a promotion. So I don't know for my uh, for my centaur, it happened I think on level eight, where I did get the option either to grab attack or to grab a promotion into centaur huntsman. So I don't see the reason why it would work differently for other races. I think it will be the case for all these units. I'm just not sure with uh, the second version if you need higher level for that like that you upgrade huntsman into chief later or if it's just pure rng that you can get uh, on level 8 either huntsman or or chief but it works like that so if you want to see this unit just grab the basic units keep fighting don't allow them to die and you will get access to the higher tier or higher or other types of these units uh, eventually so this was just a uh, a few words to how to get them and uh, the thing I almost want, also wanted to talk about a bit in this video are actually units from the previous DLC. Uh, they are in the game for a while actually now so I have uh, some experience with them and most of them are not that important and so I've decided I will mention them in this video and I can also say how you get these units because some people still don't know which units you can actually get into your army which you can't so I, I will talk about that uh, what uh, I found out so far there is actually nothing on tier 1 so we can move to tier 2 right away and uh, from new units from tier 2 I'll just go through all of this to make sure I don't miss anything yeah we get Black Widow Black Widow is just a spider, a bit stronger when you kill something with a Black Widow. Uh, it will lay an egg into the corpse and if that egg survives for, for two turns, uh, it will hatch a spider from it or a new unit you can use on uh, in the battle. The second ability, the, this, uh, uh, this uh, egg laying, is not that useful so far. I've been using these guys just a normal as normal spiders and how you can get them, you just find... Uh, you can find an egg as for a spider and you can hatch a black widow if you have proper building for that. So not a big deal here, just another version of the spider. Next, gargoyles. Obsidian gargoyle and crystal gargoyle. Now, uh, pretty similar to normal gargoyles. The main difference is when obsidian gargoyle dies, it explodes and hits everything around it. Even light units, your, your units and opponent units. Everything that is standing around it for... A few points of damage, like I don't know, depends on resistance. Uh, the most I've seen, like five damage, something like that. So not really a big deal. Just be careful when there is a unit uh, low on HP uh, near the gargoyle, so you don't kill your own unit. And uh, crystal gargoyle is uh, uh, gets healed when you cast a spell on it. It like uh, soaks the magic into itself and heal itself. Uh, how to get these units so far, the only way I've managed to find is uh, through scrolls, so you can summon them, uh, they get stronger with your summoning uh, summoning power, and you can use them only one battle, after the battle they disappear and in next battle you have to cast them again. So, mm, these are gargoyles, and yeah, those scrolls, you can find them quite often, so they are not that rare. And that's all for the tier 2. Let's move to tier 3. Here we have a bit more units. So again, I will quickly just go through all of this. Demon, yeah, we have seen these guys. Uh, White Wizard, Black Wizard. Black Wizard, I think, is new. So this guy is... Uh, we have uh, seen White Wizard before as a tier 3 unit. Oh, actually, no. Uh, in the 3 unit, we had Magicians. Uh, so both these guys are new. Hmm... Another white wizard, another type of uh, like a support caster with a really decent range attack. So what you would expect from a mage on the battlefield, you can support your units, you can do a lot of damage from your uh, ranged attack. So and uh, uh, these guys are one of the reasons because they, you can see them quite often now. Uh, why I prioritize resistance even more than I did uh, before. Black wizard, the opposite of, uh, of white wizard. Uh, instead of buffing uh, units, you are debuffing opponent and you can raise skeleton 
again pretty damn strong uh, ranged attack and some more decent level ups uh, as you level as they level up uh, but so far I haven't found a way how to get them into my army so it seems that this is uh, uh, a unit for the AI only at least in single player but they are pretty dangerous so be careful when you see them around they can do a lot of damage with their with their shots uh, so those are casters and let's move on obsidian golem, crystal golem and clay golem so obsidian golem, semis obsidian gargoyle when, it, when he dies he explodes and deals some damage I think it's a bit more than gargoyle but I haven't seen like any crazy damage just you know like one or two uh, more points of damage than gargoyle but still like when you take uh, uh, five points of damage to everything around him it's something but not that strong the main main strength of uh, all golems is actually their durability and uh, all their abilities they have like immunities uh, petrification fire poison immunity spell immunity uh, uh, their intrepid ability, which means they uh, are not affected by spells that uh, or abilities that affect morale. Also, you get uh, stunning blow, crushing blow as you level up, damage weapon, all these things with decent uh, with decent offensive stats. So another uh, quite decent unit, but uh, not that different from the usual usual golem that's been in the game before. And uh, how you can get them, there are two ways, either, either you can get a scroll to summon them or you can get an ingot. If you have the scroll, uh, you can just get them for one battle, after the battle they disappear and you have to recast them in the next battle. If you get the ingot and have the proper building, you can actually hatch them from the ingot, as weird as this may sound like hatching ingots, but yeah, let's use uh, these words. And like this, you can get them in your army forever. So. There are two options. Same is for Crystal Golem. Crystal Golem, uh, same as Crystal Gargoyle. When you cast a spell on him, he will actually soak the magic and heal himself. But he's a bit weaker than uh, the Obsidian Golem. And again, same as the, the Obsidian Golem, you can either get him from spells for just one battle or from Ingot to get him permanently in your army. And uh, next, Clay Golem. Clay Golem. I actually haven't seen Clay Golem Ingot yet, so I can't say if you can get him permanently, but you can definitely get him from a spell, and there is one huge difference uh, between Crystal Golem and Obsidian Golem, uh, because scrolls required for these two guys are tier 3, but for Clay Golem it's tier 2 spell, so you can get tier 3 units from tier 2 spell, which... Uh, is accessible a lot sooner and if you are lucky and get this guy early on the shard or get the spell early on the shard you can start using it really early and he's still pretty damn strong so I would say this is one of the most overpowered spells in the game now and in PvP I mean in multiplayer when you surprise someone with this unit early there is no way how uh, he can kill this so I don't know if uh, Either this golem should be weakened or they should make the spell also tier 3. It really seems too much having tier 3 unit, strong tier 3 unit from tier 2 spell. But yeah, uh, as I said, don't know if you can get ingot from him, but uh, you can get him from spell. And another unit, Ice Demon. This guy, a bit stronger version of uh, the normal demon. The biggest difference, probably you get word of ice on him, which is... Uh, Quite a strong spell when he casts it. Uh, I think armor piercing and the hex, uh, both these skills you can see already on a demon. And demons are strong, so another addition to demon army. Uh, but um, I'm not sure if you can get uh, this guy into your army permanently. There is a summon demon spell. Uh, so you can get him from scroll, but if there is a way how to actually keep him in the army, I'm not sure. So, if uh, you are playing with uh, demon armies, so uh, you may want, want to test this. If, uh, for example, you can get this guy from a ritual eventually, I don't know if it's possible to keep him after you cast the spell. Maybe, but I don't think so. Well, I don't have that many experience with demon 
at all so I can't really say if it's possible to keep him but what I know is that you can get him from a spell so that's this guy and let's move on to another demon which is Succubus uh, this actually is quite weak unit for a tier 3 but uh, uh, when you when you meet it in a higher tier demon army uh, it actually can cause uh, quite some trouble it's uh, uh, flying unit, the ranged unit with the usual demon uh, abilities as you would expect and it's pretty damn annoying when you have to fight all those strong demons and together with that you have some uh, succubus standing behind them shooting at you mm. I think not that strong by themselves but in the demon army they are really decent and how to get them again you can get scroll to summon them and again I don't know if you can keep them in the army so uh, maybe I'll test it but uh, if you want to figure out fast then you will have to test it uh, for yourself next desert troll well up until now uh, desert troll locations were bugged so I have never tried uh, them but I would say they'll be pretty similar to the usual swamp trolls uh, I don't see anything different here uh, necrophage actually necrophage do these guys have necrophage they don't so uh, they can heal themselves when they eat corpses and they have uh, desert knowledge which actually makes them quite uh, strong in deserts with the uh, high amount of stamina they have uh, because when you have army that uh, doesn't have that much stamina you can be tired faster than these trolls and it's uh, uh, really likely that you will be tired first and uh, once this, this happens these trolls will just destroy you so make sure that uh, your army is actually quite strong and the, that, that you can handle the stamina while you're fighting these guys in desert and how you can get them if it's possible to recruit them from uh, troll slayers I don't know I haven't seen the option yet could be but can't confirm it so if you know let me know in comments uh, maybe I can see the option but uh, can't confirm it now another unit tainted unicorn and this will be the case for more units as we go to tier 4 I haven't seen these guys yet uh, someone told me that th you can find them in some armies like dark druids but they are really rare I can't confirm this I've seen some the high high-end uh, dark druid armies like in the fifth or sixth ring and still haven't seen them there so it's a question if uh, you can even f meet this, these guys and they seem like a, a demon version of tainted unic of uh, unicorns and that's all what I can say about them like I haven't seen them as I said so we'll keep playing and um, we'll see if they are there or not and now let's move to tier 4 uh, here we have uh, three new dragons actually I will start with uh, new giant and new new treant uh, fire giant uh, ranch unit specialized on fire immune to fire uh, as for uh, all tier, f tier 4 units really strong but uh, both these two guys have their weakness in their resistance, especially the fire giant. With resistance of 4, you just web him, and uh, or sleep, or anything, just any crowd control will work. And with morale of 11, you can just destroy him with, uh, with basic fear. Uh, and uh, he's not a problem anymore, but if you don't have access to these spells, he can just annihilate your army. Uh, but usually you don't go after armies with the giants uh, without being prepared for it so it shouldn't be a problem but uh, as uh, the tainted unicorn I haven't seen him so far so it's a question if uh, you can even meet him and again I'll keep playing maybe he's somewhere and that's the same case for Dr Dark Triant haven't seen him yet and it's just uh, like a demon version of normal Triant with some demon skills uh, like Taint or uh, Deadlands Knowledge so I can't say if you can find him with Dark Druids or if you can find him with Demons uh, again as, as uh, previous two units just keep playing maybe you'll be lucky and get them and now the strongest of Eador uh, units three new dragons let's start with a st Storm Dragon 
ridiculously overpowered as all dragons uh, with their spell immunity and entanglement immunity they are just immune to all crowd control and you just have to take the whole damage uh, which is really damn high 38 both uh, stats on level 1 high defense and you have a ranged attack of 30 with 10 shots just crazy and Thunderstrike, another overpowered ability when attacking an enemy in melee, the unit deals magic damage equal to half its uh, attack uh, strength to all the enemies in neighboring hexes. The damage is split evenly between all neighbors, so uh, not only doing ridiculous damage to its target but also to everything around. So, really strong dragon. Another one, Fire Dragon, uh, specialized on fire again, immune to uh, spells and entanglement, uh, or we can say immune to web. Uh, with uh, even stronger this time, 41 attack, 36 counter, 32 uh, ranged attack, uh, capable of fire bread. For the cost of additional stamina, the unit can exhale a stream of flame, burning not just its target, but whoever stands behind behind it as well. Uh, we have fire aura, so everything that is around is being damaged. Fire immunity. Yeah, this both these guys are significantly stronger than the usual dragon, or at least it seems to me they are significantly stronger. I've met the fire dragon, and I had to reload. It was just too much. I wasn't ready for it by far. I will try to uh, figure out how to go after them, but you will need some really strong units and heroes, especially if there will be more of them. And probably the strongest one. I haven't seen this guy yet. It's a cursed dragon, like a demon version of the dragon with the taint of 30, which is just ridiculous. And uh, usual stuff you would expect from dragon, spell immunity, web immunity, attack 42, uh, counter attack 38, 25 French attack, just another crazy dragon. Uh, but uh, the question is with dragons, if you can get one of these guys into your army or not. I think you can't. That dragon is a special like a class of units uh, in Eador, which are the only unit which is not available to players. Uh, the only exception is dragon form spell, which is uh, definitely significantly weaker as a normal dragon. Uh, I've heard some rumors that you can find dragon eggs, but this is a real, real just a rumor, and I personally don't think uh, it's possible. But maybe some super rare drop. I don't know. It's it's, it's possible. Like I, uh, if if it's if it is actually in the game, I can see it being like so super rare that you just get maybe one in I don't know five shards uh, that you explore to 100%, something like that. Uh, but what would be a point of such unit? Mm, I don't see like. Uh, how you would be, how you would want to use such a unit? Just explore uh, shard after shard after shard to eventually get it, try it, and go to another shard. I don't know. So I think this is just uh, some units that could be useful in uh, uh, like very late multiplayer. Yeah, as I said, I don't think that uh, they will be available in single player. Uh, as a unit that you would be able to get into your army uh, from some egg or something. But if you know that uh, f about some of these units uh, that uh, you can get them or I didn't say anything, uh, please mention that in comments. Uh, there is still many things to be found with these uh, or in these two uh, DLCs. So share your information with uh, other people, please. And I hope that uh, you have found this. Uh, Video useful. Uh, I know that uh, some information were not uh, exactly precise, but all of this is new. Some of those uh, things are just hard to try. It takes a lot of time, so I've tried my best to give you some of uh, my ideas about how to use the new units and how to get them. And uh, I'll see you next time in the normal part of uh, the Let's Play. Until then, have a good time. Bye bye.